Thurman, welcome to Switzerland. Thank you, George. Thank you very much to be part of our show. We are here because we're giving away a prize for young talents, mm -hmm. uh, 100,000 Swiss francs. Fantastic. Which you will have the task to give to the elected film mm -hmm. or filmmaker mm -hmm. who helped you when you were young and starting your career. I always used to say that every single experience was a piece of the next part, part of the journey. You know, I started acting very young. I started acting when I was 16. I made my first film um, and never stopped. So I learned on the job very much, you know, and uh, I figured out at that time, this is a director's medium. And I w was very fortunate to work with some wonderful directors very early on, like John Borman, Terry Gilliam, Stephen Frears, in my first sort of formative years. And then not long after that, I met Quentin Tarantino and, uh, you know, John Woo. I mean, I, so me, I always follow the director. So I think the directors have really been the most help to me in my career. But what made you become an actress? What inspiration, what dream, what... I don't know, experience in, in your childhood? Well, I always loved acting uh, as a child. I think actually it's very classic and it's happened a lot with actors, but I was dyslexic and a lot of dyslexic children who have delayed reading. Yeah. The theater and, and doing the plays and word memorization and expression in that way. So if you have trouble expressing yourself in writing, it's, it's kind of a legendary relationship actually between the two. So... I was just always in the school play. It was something that I loved doing from the very beginning. My grandmother was an actress um, on and off Broadway way back when. Uh, and uh, so in my blood, I felt a little bit permitted, okay. like I would have a chance. Now you will be part of a, of a series and the whole context of movies and TV shows is totally changing. We have huge TV shows, mm -hmm. all these productions by Netflix, etc., etc. But you have also been part of many independent movies. And how could you explain the difference to our audience of these type of huge series which are being developed today, a typical Hollywood movie and an independent movie? Okay, well, those are massively different animals. But, um, I mean, for instance, right, right now I'm going to go do uh, a, a new piece. It's by one of my oldest and best friends um, that I met when I came to New York initially, Adam Brooks. And that one is kind of like a, it's fun and it's sexy and it's comedic. But I did before with John Robin Bates a dramatic mini-series called The Slap. It's just much more fluid, the process of making television. They change much more. Whereas films, which one single movie takes so many years to put together, and it's a 90-minute narrative, that narrative has usually been truly very much refined before you start to film it. And, uh, um, and that's what I'm more used to. You know, I, have, I haven't done that much television, but I really like the television I'm seeing. Um, and so much of the cinematic talent is moved over there now that you have this really, and it's just enjoyable to get to watch a 900 minute narrative uh, with the characters having so much time to unfold and so many details that, you know, in 90 minutes you cannot say. But I think to me, the, the 90 minute narrative will always be, or the 120 minute narrative, depending on whose film it is will always be closest to my heart. But we were also talking a little earlier about uh, theater mm -hmm. and some projects you have in mind to yeah. be on stage. Yes, I'm planning to go on stage uh, in the spring of next year. Which is, again, a total different ball game. Mm -hmm. uh, probably you will feel even more pressure, even if the audience is, is, is more limited. Yes, yeah, so we were to, you and I were talking about the, the tension of the live act, right? And how you, 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 can't, it's, you cannot get it back, right? Once it's out there, there's no fixing it. There's no, no trying it again, except for the next night with all different people. It's something I haven't done in about 17 years. Um, so I'm definitely, I imagine, rusty. And I'll have to be uh, very rehearsed. But you consider that as a kind of personal challenge of, of yours? Terrifying. 
I mean, I might as well go bungee cord jumping. You know, I might as well take up hang gliding. Have you done that? I think I've done enough crazy, like physically risky things. You know, it's just, I think it'll be exhilarating for me just to... So you like the thrill? Uh, I think I need the thrill. Obviously, one of the uh, roles you're best known for is uh, The Bride in Kill Bill. How did these film came together? How did the director approach you? Why did you do it? Um, what inspired you doing that particular movie? Originally, apparently, supposed to be only one movie, but turned into two. There's actually a cut together version of both of them, which is called the the whole bloody affair. It was a it was an idea that came up when we made Pulp Fiction together. Yeah, and then he started to write it. You know, then he became obsessed with writing it, and in a way, that was just destiny. You know, I, there was no no choice not to do it. It was like, it was, it was, it was for me. It was for you. So you knew each other and it was clear. Oh yeah, kinda... yeah, yeah. I was, I was what, you know, I always call a front line reader. I had the pleasure of, of getting scenes and pages from him as he was writing. Some of the most outrageous things <laughs> did not wind up in the movie because his imagination is just so incredible. Um, but the process of seeing how he develops and churns through ideas And then also while he was writing, it took so long. And then I got pregnant and I had my son. Yeah. So then he waited for me to deliver my baby. Um, so I had to start training from when I was, when my son was like three months old. Do you like these more physical roles and these more action movies? I, I don't really, haven't really made really action movies except for that movie. It, that movie had such a sort of an effect that uh, for a long time, you know, I would get a script for an action movie and I would just think, mm. I kind of felt like that movie was so impactful that I didn't want to water it down with a lot of other like derivative action movies. Any other projects uh, up and coming you have in mind? Yes. Well, I have one film in the can uh, with Tim Roth called The Brits Are Coming, but maybe that's a bit of a working title. We'll see. But I think it's going to be called that. Anyway, it's, it's almost completely finished, and I'm negotiating another one. Well, I hope we will see you then in Zurich one day presenting one of your new movies. It would be my great privilege. <laughs> okay, now we're going to do 60 seconds, very short questions. I know, let's see what happens. Very short answers. Okay, I'll try. Let's get started, 60 seconds. Yes. Acting for me is? A joy. My favorite movie of all time is? Mm, too many. I would never leave my house without? My shoes. Dance like Mia Abuelas or fight like the bride? Dance. My the bride dances. <laughs> my advice to young actors is? Uh, keep your self-respect close. I would most like to meet President Obama again. <laughs> If I had not become an actress, I would have become? Mm. Probably stayed in school forever. <laughs> Endlessly curious about everything. The place I feel most comfortable in? My bed. I can always spare 10 minutes for? My children. The most inspirational thing somebody has ever said to me is? Hmm. I should have prepared for that one. I've heard many wise words. That's fine for us. <laughs> Uma Thurman, thank you very much for that amazing interview. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.